Hey all you Firebase developers, let's talk about two of my favorite things, Cloud Firestore and the Admin SDK. So I love that Firebase has such robust client-side SDKs for iOS, Android, and web. But did you know that Firebase also has a server-side option, the Admin SDK? The Admin SDK lets you access Firebase features server-side, so you can, for example, read and write to Cloud Firestore outside of the client. This is especially useful for offloading CPU intensive tasks and keeping secrets away from the client. Now, if you've seen Todd's videos on getting started with Cloud Firestore for iOS or Android, you'll already be familiar with the sample app I'm going to use, one that stores an inspiring quote. If you haven't seen these videos, I highly recommend you check them out. Todd gives a great overview of the Firestore structure. I'm going to use the iOS version of the Inspiring Quotes app, which looks like this. You can see the quote and author, as well as text fields to write a new quote and a new author. In this video, I'll show you how to use the admin SDK to make changes to Cloud Firestore, which can then be seen here in the client. So you may be wondering, how can I keep my quotes fresh with new inspiration every day? I could rely solely on users to write quotes, or just try to remember something interesting and type it in the console manually. After all, there's no shortage of misinterpreted quotes on the internet. Didn't George Washington say that? Anyway, one neat way I could handle this is server-side. I could use one of the many quote-generating REST APIs out there to get my quotes for me and then write them to the database using the admin SDK. I can also use server-side code to send a notification to users or something like that if I wanted to. So that's what I want to show you today how to get started using the admin SDK to read and write data to Cloud Firestore. Today, I'm going to show you the Firebase admin SDK for Go, but Java, Python, and Node.js are also supported. OK, let's get started. First, I need service account credentials, which I can download from the Firebase console. Under the Firebase admin SDK tab, I'll select Generate New Private Key. This downloads a JSON file containing the service account credentials. I'll add this to my project's directory. Now, this service account JSON file contains sensitive information, including your service account's private encryption key. Remember to keep it confidential. Never add it to version control, never put it in a client app, and never store it in a public repository. Now, I'll install the Firebase Admin SDK to my Go app using Go Get. I'll navigate to where I want to put my new Go app and then create it. When initializing the admin SDK on my own server, I need to use the service account key in my options, which I do using the with credentials file method, as shown here. Then I use the new app function to create a new app from the provided context, config, and client options. In my case, the client options contain the service account file, so the app will be authenticated using that credential. Now, if you're running your code from within the Google Cloud Platform, you use the Google application default credentials. That way, the admin SDK itself fetches a service account on your behalf, like this. Since I'm simply running my project locally for now, I'm going to use the service account credentials. Now that I've initialized the admin SDK, I'm ready to get a random quote and write it to the database. But before I get coding, let's briefly examine the structure of the quotes app. At the top level, I start with a collection called sample data. This collection contains just one document called inspiration. This document will itself have two key value pairs, or we can call them fields, one called quote and another called author. Now, as an aside, keep in mind, I'm not storing one quote per user. Everybody in the world will be altering this one document. If I were looking to save a different quote per user, I'd probably set up a users collection and create a different document for each user. And again, if you'd like to see how to build this app on iOS or Android, check out Todd's Firecast on getting started with Cloud Firestore. Now I'm going to call a function I'm calling getQuote, the result of which contains a JSON object with a random quote. The result of the function looks something like this. All right, let's generate a quote and then add it to Cloud Firestore. OK, I'm going to call the getQuote function, which returns a struct called quote, containing the quote and the author. I'll log the quote in terminal so we can see it. I'll write the quote to the inspiration doc in the sample data collection using the set function, which sets the document's data to whatever data I pass to the function. If the document does not yet exist, 
it will be created now. Keep in mind, this replaces all data in the document with the data passed. If I wanted to update some fields or add to the document, I'd use update instead of set. I'll log the error if one is found. Then I'll log the result so we can see when the quote was successfully written to the database. All right, let's see this code in action. In the terminal, I'll build and then run my inspiration app. The console logs tell me that the new quote was written successfully. And we can see that quote here, and we can also see it in the Firebase console. But I think it's cooler to watch the quote change in the app. So here's the iOS version of the quotes app with the current randomly generated quote. When I run my Go app again, I can see the quote changed in the iOS app as well. See? Pretty cool. My service side code can now generate quotes. Great, that's sure to keep users motivated. But I may also want to be able to read data from Cloud Firestore server side. Say if I wanted to sanitize bad words from quotes or send notifications when new quotes are written. So let's look at getting data from Firestore. I'll get data from the inspiration doc in the sample data collection using get. I'll also include a catch block to handle if an error occurs. I'll just log it for now. Then after I get data, I'm going to check if the document exists. If not, I'll log that no document exists. Then I can use the document data for whatever my app needs, such as sending a notification. And there you have it. Now you know how to use Cloud Firestore for Go on your server. I hope this inspires you to incorporate Cloud Firestore and the admin SDK into your Firebase projects. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos from Firebase, including Firecasts like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode.